In this problem, we want to calculate the power that is made available to the turbine as the water flows through the pipe between those two tanks. And we have calculated before that across the two sides of the turbine here, we have a pressure drop due to hydrostatic pressure that's about seven bars. Uh, we also calculated that there were friction losses inside the pipe, which amounts to about 0.2 bar. And we also calculated that each of, that the sum of the four bands um, induced a loss of 0.01 bar uh, in total through the pipe. And so the question becomes, what do we do with all those uh, pressure drops? And how do we get from there to an actual power in watts that is made available to the turbine? Well, the power uh, that's made available to the turbine is the volume flow uh, multiplied by the delta P that occurs at the turbine between the two sides of the turbine. So delta P turbine. And this delta P is made of the sum of all those other delta P's. But we have to add and subtract them in a clever way. Um, the volume flow remains the same here, but the sum of those delta P's is first the delta P due to altitude, uh, like it is now. This is here, if I close this parenthesis, I would get the power that would be available to the turbine if there were no friction in the pipe. But fortunately, friction in the pipe subtracts from this delta P available here, and we have to remove it from there. So we remove the delta P due to friction. And we also remove the delta P due to uh, the bend losses, like so. You have to be very careful with this um, because every fluid dynamicist uh, has at some point tripped over their own feet, uh, adding or subtracting those terms here. The reason is that some of those terms are positive and some of them are negative. The delta P altitude is a negative term in this case because the pressure at the outlet is much smaller than the pressure at the inlet of the turbine. Otherwise, it would not work. The delta P friction and the delta P bends, each are negative terms as well. By definition, every delta P due to friction that we calculate will be a negative number. The problem is, because of historical reasons, because hydraulics has been the very first area of fluid mechanics to deliver any useful results, the tradition in this field is to express those delta P's as positive numbers. So it is a little bit like we would say, uh, I have a loss of 100 euros, instead of saying I have a net transfer of minus 100 euros. And so the convention is always to express those as positive numbers, uh, including in the Moody diagram, where you will, where you will read usually positive numbers. Um, so be very, very careful when you write those terms to express them as negative numbers, let me let me highlight this here, as negative numbers up there. Here, whoops, this did not work. Let me let me highlight this like so, like this. So those delta p's here are negative numbers, um, and so when we put in the numbers now into the final result, we're going to have to add and subtract different numbers. I think my tablet just disappeared. Ah, here we are. Yes. Okay. So let's put this uh, into a final result. We have the volume flow multiplied by, uh, let me write uh, the volume flow as a number. The volume flow is 800 liters per second, and this turns out to be 0 0.8 meters cubed per second. And I multiply this by a sum. And the sum is minus 7.06 uh, times 10 to the power 5. This is the pressure drop that we would have if there was no friction. But to this, I have to subtract two negative numbers. And one is the delta P due to friction minus 2.03 times 10 to the power of 4. And uh, the power loss due to the bends, which is minus 1.06 times 10 to the power of 3, like so. So I can close my parentheses. Let me put square brackets in here, like so. Um, and if you put this into your calculator, you will get something like this. You should get minus 5.479 times 10 to the power 5. 
and what is the unit of a power it is watts so it's expressed in watts like this and typically in engineering we like to express this as kilowatts megawatts milliwatts and so on and so forth so we re-express this as minus 547 point nine uh, kilowatts like this this is the power this is the power made available to the turbine like so i say made available because the turbine has its own efficiency uh, the th the power that is being fed to the turbine usually called the hydraulic power um it has these 547 548 kilowatts the turbine being somewhat inefficient will take this power subtract it from the water um, but will also put back some of that power in the form of heat into the water so it will agitate the water being inefficient and so typically you would only get 80 or 90 percent of that power out of the turbine into a shaft and again you trans transform this power into electricity with some additional losses none of this is our concern for today what we want to look at is the net power that is being uh, made available to the turbine uh, one last remark this power is negative this this number is negative this is from the point of view of the water the water loses in this case 548 kilowatts uh, if this power was positive it would mean this is not a turbine at all it is a pump we have to add power to the to the water so here we are this is how you add up the different pressure differences inside a, a pipe system to compute the pumping or turbining power uh, that is available